In this lesson, we're gonna check out some other grooves that utilize consistent 16th notes in your lead hand. Now that we've checked out three different ways to play consistent 16th notes in Academy Lesson 41, some classic grooves that use these consistent 16th notes in Academy Lesson 42, and then how to adjust our phrasing to make these feel really good, now we're gonna check out some other applications that we can apply your new techniques to. Hey everyone, I'm super psyched to be giving away this beautiful Gretsch Chrome Over Brass drum. Gretsch has been making this drum for many, many years. It's a classic drum and this one is brand new. And if you win, I will sign this drum and personalize it to you and send it directly to your house. So hit the link to sign up and I hope you win and see you down the line. Some of these other applications will include bossa nova, samba, fast rock, 12-8, and then some really cool fills. Of course, there are thousands of different ways that you could apply these newfound skills, but first we're gonna take a look at bossa nova. You'll notice in that last example, I was using more of a shank tip technique. So when you're adding some of these different accents with some of these different grooves against these different techniques, it might at first take a little bit of independence, but this is gonna make it so that you can play whatever you want against consistent 16th notes. I'll use consistent 16th notes sometimes in a second line context, and you could put the right hand on the snare or the hi-hat or the ride, and one of my favorite things to do is to put it over here on the floor tom. All right, now let's check out putting the right hand on some different sound sources. Right now we're gonna try that with the right hand on the hi-hat. Now we can move the right hand to the ride cymbal. But now we're gonna do one of my favorite things, which is to move the right hand over to the floor tom. Those last few examples looked at a modified 2-3 New Orleans clave, and right now we're gonna take a look at a modified 3-2 New Orleans clave. For these, I'm gonna play these a little slower. I'm gonna loosen up the snares a little bit, and I'm also gonna play these on a wood snare. Now we'll try that with the right hand on the hi-hat. You'll notice that when I'm playing these, I like to really loosen up the snares, and if I get a little bit of real gravelly snare sound, I kind of like that. Here it is with the right hand on the ride cymbal. And now we'll do my favorite thing again, which is to put that right hand on the floor tom. Now we can apply consistent 16th notes across the board. I've written this out on all the beats, but you may wanna use this sparingly 
or you could even just use this as a fill or a variation. You can use these techniques in a swing or jazz situation as well. Let's first take a look at the standard ride cymbal pattern. Now we'll add some more skip beats at the end of the phrase, and as these tempos get faster, you can use any of the three techniques to apply to your ride cymbal pattern. Here's a phrase that I love, and these are some things that you'll hear Tony Williams playing a good bit, and this is where you're gonna to start to add some repetitive skip beats in a three note phrase. As the tempos increase, you're gonna to wanna to phrase these a little bit closer to straight eighth notes. Since I originally introduced these techniques as 16th notes, I'll write it out and demonstrate it that way, just so you can see how that looks as 16th notes, but you'll never see it written out that way, so I'm gonna just demonstrate it this way so you can closely relate the techniques to what we're doing now. This next example demonstrates some of what Clyde Stubblefield is playing at the end of Funky Drummer. And if you can get all these different kind of accents underneath your consistent 16th notes with your lead hand, you're gonna be able to play almost anything you want under these 16th notes. Clyde would sometimes add buzzes to some of these accents as well, and by doing that, that really creates another challenge under these consistent 16th notes. And now I'm gonna show you a phrase that I've really been enjoying playing lately, and basically, both hands are playing the push-pull or the open close on the floor tom and the snare drum. But then we'll spell out some accents that hint at the New Orleans second line. And note that when you go to play the accent, you've got to leave out a note right before whichever drum you're playing the accent on. And you can experiment with the different phrases that you want to play, but check this out. This can be a really fun thing to play and experiment with. You could do all kinds of bass drum variations under this, but right now I'm just gonna play a mambo bass drum pattern and keep it pretty simple. Thank you for tuning in to check out this lesson. Keep in mind that this is just an abbreviated version and the full length version of this lesson along with the full PDF and all of that is available inside of my online drum school Stanton Moore Drum Academy. As a member of my academy you get full access to all of my video lessons, all of my PDFs, all of my courses and you get direct access to me where you can ask me questions and interact with me inside the community forum. While I have your attention, hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I'm coming out with more lessons and behind the scenes videos.